Good afternoon, everyone. This is The Doctor, and I hope you're all having a wonderful day. It is a beautiful day out here in the Pacific Northwest once again. It is 2.13 p.m., and today I really wanted to talk to you guys about emulators and how how they're currently functioning with War of the Visions and what you can do to optimize them. If you're someone who already is pretty technologically savvy, this video might not help you, but if you're someone who has exhausted all other options and you really kind of want a first-person experience on what I did to make my experience a little bit better, uh, this might be the video for you. Now, uh, just to be fully transparent with you guys, I do find that the emulators are not stable. And that is just a fact. You can do things to make them more stable. You can do things to make them look better. You can make things run smoother as well. Uh, however, for right now, until further patches come out, the game is not going to be fully stable on an emulator. I would definitely not recommend farming multi on an emulator. Things I would do on an emulator, though, would be like daily playing, farming, that type of stuff you'll probably be fine getting away with. If you really want to get into either streaming, War of the Visions, or you want to do some sort of content on YouTube, or you want to do something of that nature, or a lot of multi-battles, you're going to want to mirror your phone, and you're going to want to find a software program that will do that for you, because the phone is going to be much more stable on the multi-battle system and the client in general. With my phone, I usually get about two crashes every six hours was on my last stream uh when i was using emulators only i got about two to three crashes per hour but that was farming multi after the multi update so i would say give it a chance uh it was this bad when the jp version of the game launched for emulators and knowing gummy and knowing what i've experienced in the first brave xvs and other gummy games it's probably just going to be patched and fixed give it a couple weeks they'll probably roll it out no problem now the emulators I'm going to cover in this video are going to be Bluestacks and LD Player. I have tried the other emulators as well, so I've tried Nox. Nox was my primary emulator for multiple mobile games. That's Brave Exvius, that's Ark Knights. I played pretty much everything on Nox and I've loved Nox. I've used Mimu a lot. I've used, uh, gosh, I think those are the only other two I've used. I know I've pretty much tried everything on the market. I've actually tried Bluestacks, and this is the first game that I've able, been really able to connect with Bluestacks and use efficiently. So before we dive into this, uh, just some resources. If you look down in the video comment section, I have linked all of the resources in this video that I'll be referring to. So you can easily click, download, or just figure out what you can be... Something in my mouth, sorry guys. Um, what you can do in order to figure all of this out. A lot of my information comes from the resources that I posted because I've actually used these resources. I have not linked a single thing I haven't downloaded myself and used myself to help try and solve this problem. So we're going to jump into it. Let's take a look at Bluestacks here. Now the one thing you're going to have to do in general for Bluestacks and for LD Player before anything else is enable virtualization. If you don't have virtualization enabled, you're not going to be do not going to be able to maximize performance on either of these emulators at all. So, if you need to know if your uh, virtualization is enabled, what you do is you go to your task manager here and you go up to performance. Now, I am on Windows 10. It might look a little bit different on your computer. That's okay. If you need to know how to get to your task manager, Control Alt Delete and Task Manager is the fastest way to get here. There is a fewer details view like this. This is what the more modern version looks like. I always go to more details and you're going to have to go to more details to get all of the information here. Now the first thing we're going to go to is performance. And you can see that you can see a lot of things. Memory here is going to be important. So you see that I have 16 gigabytes of memory. That's going to be important later when we go into uh, Bluestacks and LD Player because there are settings that require you to check your memory. You can see my GPU use is low. That's also something we'll be talking about. And then you can see my CPU use is at 55%, which for creating a streaming video and for talking about Bluestacks, for talking about LD Player, is actually pretty good right now. So when you're in this screen, what you want to look at for virtualization is right here. And it says virtualization enabled. And this is something that 
you have to have it basically from my understanding just clones the phone online so that your computer doesn't have to work as hard when it's emulating now let's say that you are on a different operating system and you don't have this exact task manager right here well what you can do to either find out if your virt virtualization is enabled or disabled is i put a link down below to the leo moon uh, desktop application which will check and verify what operating system your computer's on what uh, i believe it's mother card motherboard and cpu you have whether you're able to enable virtualization and if virtualization is enabled or disabled for your computer now if it is disabled and you can't have virtualization on your computer you're in a tough bind you probably can't do anything if it's disabled but you can enable it the next step I'm going to recommend to you is go to the YouTube video I've linked for how to enable virtualization on your computer. Even a beginner can do this and it's not that hard. Just get the video up on your phone, make sure you're able to access your BIOS and change your virtualization settings on your CPU. Now there is one other thing we can do in here and this is going to be important whether you're playing on Bluestacks or your um, LD player. We're going to go into details right here. And again, you're going to want to do the more details. And you can see here, this is going to list every program I compute on my computer here. LD box headless is the program that is going to be enabling basically the whole program, right? It's going to be the thing that is going to be driving the most CPU and driving the most performance. If you're going to be doing multiple things and you want to make sure to limit the crashes that you're going to experience, you want to right click on this and then you want to go to set priority and I don't think you guys can actually see this on your screen so you would right click it go to set priority and it's always going to be set at normal I would set it to high because that's going to enable your computer to set this program as a higher priority for all other things now DN player down here this does not need to be set it's only the headless that needs to be set as a higher priority now for blue stacks I don't believe Bluestacks has a headless. It might as well. I would just enable it on HD player here because I believe that's going to be, you can see that's what's taking my CPU. So that's probably the Bluestacks program up. I would just right click that and I would set set priority and set my priority as high. So that's it for CPU settings, guys. There's a couple other options you can do with NVIDIA. If you look up some NVIDIA 3D options, those are on the LD player optimization link that I've submitted down below. I don't have that feature on my NVIDIA, probably because I run a pretty good graphics card, and I believe a lot of those features are on automatically enabled for me, but a lot of this is going to be what we just talked about was a lot of the hardware side. Now switching into the software side and going specifically to blue stacks, we are going to go to our settings. Now a lot of these settings are going to be important when we are, oh, oh interesting, it's not going to show you the uh, settings here. It is not gonna want to do that, is it? Okay, give me just a second here, you guys. We will make it so that you guys can see the settings here. So we're just gonna do an entire window capture of my computer here. And just make sure that you guys can just see everything that I see. So here you go, this is my uh, Streamlabs. <laughs> and this is my War of the Visions. So we're gonna go into settings here. And you can see here that I have it set for 1600 by 900. I should actually have this set at 1920 by 1080 because my computer is a 1920 by 1080 resolution and your program is always going to run better if it's at the same resolution that your monitor is continually performing at. So you want to set it to the same resolution as your computer. DPI is going to be, I believe, the amount of pixels for a certain amount of space. So if you want the game to look better, you want to hit 320. I found that for performance reasons, I stick to 160. You can, of course, change to portrait mode or landscape mode. I just keep it in landscape mode on the tablet. Now for the engine, I do use OpenGL with advanced uh, graphic engine mode. And I do use the preferred dedicated computer graphics for NVIDIA if you have a GeForce enabled. I do choose hardware decoding. Now, this is the really important part, and this is where you're going to get a difference with Bluestacks and with LD Player. Now, Bluestacks has multiple options here. So you can see that I went with custom. For War of the Visions, you're going to want four CPU cores if you have a multi-core CPU. 
If not, you're going to want to limit the amount of cores so that you can process other things in the background besides the game. Now for recommended memory, when we were in the performance settings, if you remember I pointed out to you and I showed you that I had 16 gigabytes of memory. So in an optimal setting here, I would want to put half of whatever memory I have as the memory. In this case, the maximum I can allocate is 4096. That's okay, that's what I'm going to select. There are ways to bypass that and get into the root settings of blue stacks. That's a little too complicated for this type of a video, so we're not going to jump into that with you guys. Now, LD player though does have the capacity to go up to 8000 and customize it a little bit more. So that's why for me LD player has personally performed better for me in the past. Frame rate, of course, frame rate is something that you're going to want. It's going to affect your smoothness. I always run it at 45. This was when I was testing around with blue stacks trying to make it work better than it was while I was streaming. And I believe those are all of the settings for Bluestacks that I really changed. There wasn't much that really opened up in Bluestacks. So we're gonna go ahead and go into LD Player now. And LD Player has a couple little tricks in it that people don't know. So let's go to first the multiplayer. Now, if you don't know what a multiplayer is, that enables you to make multiple settings um, to launch multiple instances of a program. So like I could run two programs of War of the Visions. I'm gonna go to optimization here, and this optimization setting is not in the settings function for the game. And one of the things that you are going to wanna make sure you check is high speed here. And then you're gonna to wanna to make sure, I believe, to check use less memory and graphics memory for optimization. This is a fresh download, so I uninstalled and reinstalled it, and I believe if you look at the LD player optimization, this is what you're going to want to do. You can adjust the FPS up here as well. I would disable audio when multiplay to reduce the CPU. And those settings are in their own world. So that's not under the settings tab. So you're going to want to go in there and adjust that first. Now going into the settings menu up here, you can see that because this is a fresh install as well, it's set to 1600 by 900. Now, unfortunately for um, LD player, you can customize, thankfully, what your um, resolution is going to be. So for me, I would probably set it to this, but I don't like the DPI 280, so I'd probably change it to 240. Four cores right here. And then this is where it's different. You see how it gives me access to 8192 that's because it knows i have 16 gigabytes of memory in my computer so no matter what ld player is going to run better on my computer than blue stacks and i can just say as a rule of thumb that has been a fact for me ld player has been my go-to streaming player and it has not fully let me down now you might have different experiences when you start getting into this type of stuff. You have to be prepared to be fully let down all the time. What works for me might not work for you. Another thing we'll look at here is disk management. So you can see the total size is 12 gigabytes and I have free 10 gigabytes, that's good. That means out of the 12 gigabytes I have allotted, only two gigabytes of it is being used up. If you're seeing something like 10 here and 13 here, you need to manually manage your disk size and change it so that it'll be good for you. Here you can set your preset model, and a lot of it is just all the Samsung Galaxies. I just use the latest one here. If I could, and I'm sure there's probably a way, I'm not sure, let me check right now. There is not, I can tell. Um, I would probably have to import the settings, but my Google Pixel has performed amazingly. If I could find a way to clone the Google Pixel settings in this, I would definitely recommend doing that because my Google Pixel has not let me down. Coming in here, you're going to see a lot of these settings are pretty normal. A lot of these settings are for other games, so you'll see there's a lot of PUBG settings in here. You can see here that it has specific PUBG game settings. Audio, you want to make sure you have the right audio on this. Other than that, those are most of the settings that I have found I've needed to adjust in order to be successful. Now again, you guys might have other things that you need to do. I think the best tip that I found that I wasn't doing was making sure to set high priority on the headless in the details tab of my task manager. I think between virtualization and setting the high priority, those were the two things that were the most helpful for me to at least get the game into a reasonably playable state. I hope you guys all found this at least a little bit useful. 
I know there's a lot of frustration and a lot of chaos around this game right now with being able to get it into a really playable state where it's reliable and you can keep doing it and really enjoy the game without having to worry about it crashing all the time. Don't worry, I hear you and I know the developers hear you and I know that they're going to fix this because they fixed it in JP and we're just going to have to wait probably a couple more weeks for it. Alright you guys, it's been a wonderful time with this video. I'm going to be doing a little bit of streaming here, probably uh, maybe, maybe about 8pm tonight. I think that's when we're going to be starting it up. So make sure you swing on by. I think we'll be starting my second account. Drop that follow, drop that like, drop that subscribe. This is all new to me and honestly the support has been amazing. So thank you so much you guys and I hope you enjoy the beautiful day like I did today.